Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. Thank you for joining me. So EU4 is out. Let's play. I'm super excited. I uh, I just just was looking over the the results of the poll for which which nation we should play as first, and unfortunately, it looks like somebody used a bot, and there's like 35,000 votes for other. So I'm gonna just have to play what I want. And in this case, I had considered a number of different places. I was thinking about playing as England. Maybe Sweden, Hungary definitely came to mind based on the Hungary Hungary series we had in CK2. But there's a lot of options, and I do think eventually I'm probably going to play pretty much all of them. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them over time. But the one that I really want to do um, right now is actually I want to play as a colonizer, and so I was really leaning heavily towards something in this area. Now, I think Castile is too large. Uh, I think that'd be way too easy. Aragon is an option. Despite the fact that Portugal was in the demo, I'm, I'm going to play Portugal. I think Portugal is going to be... They have a leg up on expansion, and I, I just really want to dominate colonization and trade. I think that uh, world domination is is going to be best facilitated by dominating the expansion towards the new world. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to play as Portugal. Now, I am playing with one small mod, which changes just... It doesn't change any of the game at all. It just changes the, the font. You notice that I've actually got larger font, it's easier to read. And uh, when you're looking at things like mission decisions, notice how that little green circle is there instead of that tiny little asterisk that you can barely see. Okay, so let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I had a lot of time to play in the demo, so I feel pretty comfortable with the game. There is going to be... Um, I'm going to probably cover some of the basics while we play, but there's like a 40 video tutorial series on the channel. Uh, it's a playlist, just tutorial type stuff. So we are a feudal monarchy. Uh, we could change to a despotic monarchy at some point. Lowers revolt risk. Oh, that's different from the uh, different from the tutorial. In the tutorial, a despotic monarchy had lower coring cost, which I wanted to rush. I wanted to get right away. See, they they went and they changed everything on me. All right, that's okay. We'll have to adapt. So we got four prestige, losing money slightly. Let's look at our missions. Start from there. Improving our prestige would gain us. One stability, that would be very nice. 50 prestige, eh, maybe kind of tough to get. That should still be available if we don't choose it right away. If we get an ally, if we ally ourselves with Castile, we'll end up getting some extra diplomatic power. That would be pretty easy to facilitate, plus the prestige, which would help us to get closer to the 50. And then we could also, wow, 200 administrative power if we core Tangier. Now Tangier has that increased coring cost since of uh, since Morocco has the Berber culture, which just increases the coring cost of enemies. So it's going to cost a lot to core this. But it's an important center of trade, and I'd really like to get Tangier early on. I think the, the best course of action is going to be to try to get the alliance with Castile. Don't worry, we'll backstab him eventually, but for now we need to try to get the alliance with Castile. I like to have all of these expanded, actually. I think it's kind of silly how you have a, you can hide them. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get a royal marriage with Castile. That'll help out with opinion a little bit. They already like us by 30, so getting an alliance would be pretty easy. Even though we've got border friction. We can build some buildings. We've got a truce, apparently, with Granada. That expires in five years. Apparently we were just at war with them. Uh, we have a free advisor slot. Now we've got, let's see, lower administrative tech cost. Increased national tax modifier. This guy is level, he's a level 2 advisor, so he's very expensive. We don't want him. He costs four times as much as level one and only gives two times as many points. So you can't really support them early on. Administrative tech. I am probably going to want a lot of administrative tech early on because in order to in order to unlock our first idea group, we need to get to level four national ideas. I want our first idea group very quickly because I want um, I want to get colonization. I want to get expansion. I'm not sure yet between expansion and exploration. Probably, it's probably going to be exploration. I mean, I like this this uh, land of opportunity bonus is really good, and then global tariffs helps out a lot. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go for that. Got it. Okay, so in that case, yes, let's consider getting this guy, so we can get a discount on our very first purchase of administrative tech. The national tax modifier would be nice. However, we, um, we're we only making 5 gold a year, so 5% increased national tax modifiers, 0.25 gold. Well, 0.25 gold per month, so I guess it's significant, but he's going to cost more than it really earns us. I think I want that. 
I'm pretty sure that the way that um, this game is going to work out is if you play with um, if you play with balance, you'll do better than if you try to force things. Now these guys are all three, three, and two, so we're not going to be able to afford any of those. These guys are all level one. We can get some discipline, land force limits modifier if we wanted some more troops, reinforcement speed. Let's just go with uh, Discipline, actually. That'll help us out with combat. I'm not worried about... I don't want to have an overfunded or oversized military. They cost a lot. We also have a lot of leaders right now, apparently. Yeah, we've got three explorers. Interesting. So they gave us three explorers, even though we don't have the idea yet. Another early game advantage. Very nice. And it looks like our ruler has been made into a general, Afonso. And he's got one point in siege, which will be really helpful for us. Okay, cool. So, let's uh, let's get started. So, we need to put our dudes wherever they go. We've got a merchant right now who is doing what? We've got two merchants. One of them is collecting in here. I don't really like that. I don't want to collect there. It's going to collect from there no matter what. And I don't want to transfer here. I want to collect from there. I'll explain why as we, as we get them back. I'm probably going to play pretty slow, probably on speed 2 or 3. No reason to rush this. This is a, uh, a World Conquest type game. Alright, so do we get our... we got two of those guys, very good. Everything looks good. Now England, I also want to get a royal marriage with right away. Because we have no heir. No legal heir right now. And there's a pretty good chance England's going to call us to war. So that's fun. I don't really want to go to war, but... We'll see. Alright, so we've got our royal marriage now with Castile. Fish will be now produced there. Wonderful. Uh, we cannot offer Castile an alliance quite yet. But as soon as we get our diplomat back, actually no, in ten more days we can't. You can't spam nations. You have to wait about a month in between. In between things, right? So okay. Um, yeah, there's the call to arms actually right there. Now even though. I don't know. Um, you know, I'd really rather wait just a couple days and see if I can get Castile in the alliance first. How much time do we have? All right, so they've accepted our alliance. Uh, if we accept the call to arms, I don't know. I'm not really sure if Castile will join us. Can we do a call to arms? You gonna come join us? You come join us, dude. I don't know if it works that way. We'll see. Okay, so we got our successful thing with. We got our alliance with them. So now we have a new mission available. We just got an extra little bit of diplomatic power by doing that. Very wise. Solidify papal relations. Don't really care about papals. Ah, we're gonna we're gonna completely ignore the pope. <laughs> Getting up to fifty prestige though would give us one stability, which would be really good early game. I think I'm gonna go for that, and we're gonna try to do some some boat bombing on these armies and get some prestige that way. Okay though, let's look at trade because my merchants are back and I want to get them doing what I want. I want one merchant to be steering trade from here. And I want another merchant to be collecting trade from here. My justification for that is that right now, there's not a lot of wealth here. But we're collecting wealth pretty safely. We're the, we have the lead position in our home port. And we actually have a better market share, or will have a better market share over here. If I just send a boat or two. Collecting from trade outside of our borders is going to lower it. But uh, I don't know how to explain this in a way that makes sense. All right. We're just going to have to do this, so let's take a look at our leaders. The maneuver score of your explorers affects the power of your, um, how much increased trade power your barks give. So I want to put them in charge of the barks, but I want to have two small groups of them. I want to have two in this group, so let's put someone in charge of that. We'll choose that guy. And I want him to protect trade on the Mauritanian coast. And I want this one to become by him, and I want him to protect trade in Sevilla. If you don't understand what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I don't know what to say. It's, 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 it's complicated. <laughs> We're going to put not me, not my ruler, but this other guy in charge. My other guy is actually better than I am, and we don't want to risk dying. So we'll put him in charge of the army, attach him to the boats, and let's be off. We might as well put that final guy in charge of this fleet. Now, we're allied with Portugal, so we can go right through their land. We are at war with all these people because of England. I am a little bit concerned about this war. 
since um, we don't really gain much by it. I'm not going to let him give away any of my land as part of a peace agreement. Probably the better thing to do would be if if we could just get some... I really think we just have to get prestige from winning some battles. Let's make sure we have a fully funded military. The fleet maintenance I might turn down a bit. Because... I don't think we're going to do too much naval combat. England's boats will do a very good job in combat. And actually, before we have them patrol, let's send all of them to help out this little water battle we've got going on up here. Alright, let's see what happens. We're going to join this battle and put it drastically in our favor. We might even get a little bit of prestige for, for participating. Yeah, so France is on that side. they got some Navy tradition. England and Portugal here. Looks like we gained some prestige for that, so it's very good. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we gained that. I'm not 100% sure, actually. It could be England that got all of it, but it would make more sense for this to be our number. And, uh, yeah, because I was a secondary participant. Alright, so you go back to guarding the Mauritanian coast now, and you go back to guarding Sevilla. And you with the men, let's go forth and join these battles over here. Now that is scary. I don't want to get involved with France's big stack. I just want to pick off the little ones and get money for it. Or prestige for it. Try to get above 50. They've got a lot of armies. Alright, so we got... Do we get... Yeah, it looks like we gained prestige for that too. Sweet. Okay, let's go away now. <laughs> um, and really all I'm interested in doing at this point is... Trying to... Um, trying to get some blockades in. Trying to pick off armies. I do not want. I'm not going to lose my troops. I need those troops badly for the future. So let's go ahead and. Um, why is there a light ship here? Oh, we actually got control of the light ships from that battle. We captured one. Cool. Excellent. So we now actually are probably very close to our force limit because we caught some of those boats. They have very low morale. All right, let's send them to join the smaller group over here. Actually, let's not do that. Never mind. Let's send them to repair first. And then we'll send them out soon. So I think we've got the... The water lines are pretty safe on this area. So I'm only going to detach one of these big ships. And I'm going to send the rest now down here, since France actually has more ports in this area than they do to the north. And I don't think we're going to get any more battles that we can actually be part of here. I don't like that at all. Go away. Get away from me. <laughs> Run away! <laughs> okay. Really, my only reason for joining this war is to try to get to 50 prestige. If we can do that, we'll get the extra stability, which will make a big difference mid... Uh, well, not mid-game, early game, since we're so early in the game. And we've got a couple advisors, or diplomats, that are not, not busy right now. Castile already really likes us. I don't really think it's going to help that much to to improve relations further. And right now, they're taking a bunch of my money. So actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to do... <laughs> we're already allied, and we have a royal marriage, but I'm going to do something kind of weird. I, I'm using... I don't like them, right? Long term, I'm going to backstab them. That's just what I do. But short term, they like me, and so let's go ahead and flag them as a rival. <laughs> Choose my own alliance member as a rival. <laughs> they still like us, the fact, despite the fact we have hostile relations. <laughs> and now, uh, when we click on them, now we can freely embargo them, which they won't like. Right? They're not going to like the fact that we have an embargo against them, but that embargo costs us nothing because I've declared them as a rival. So it doesn't cost us anything to do that, and we get a bunch of trade power now. We'll have more of a market share in that trade node. And at the same time, as soon as we can, once we get our the ability to send another diplomat, I'm going to send someone to improve relations. So we're basically spitting in their face while we pat them on the back. That kind of thing. Like, you know, hey buddy, don't worry. I'm on your side, totally. And we've got two free diplomats yet again. Let's, um... Let's go ahead and improve relations with Algiers. Now, you might be wondering why it makes any sense to do that. Well, I don't want them to be... It, it, it serves two purposes. At some point, 
these two are going to declare each other rivals. And then I'm going to get bonus relations with one of them because we will have a common enemy. The other reason to have positive relations with your enemy is that the lower their opinion of you is, the more time it takes to fabricate claims. So I want to keep the relation as high as I can so that when I decide it's time to attack him, I can do it quickly. And we're probably not going to be in a position to do it for a while, but... Yeah, let's pick them off. Can we pick them off? Come on. March 30th, April 23rd. Damn. Alright, well that's unfortunate. Let's, uh, let's see. So we are at war with Provence. Interesting. So Provence... Okay. We might be able to knock them out of the war. That's their only county. That's all they own, is one little thing. Okay, we'll leave a thing there then. A, uh, a blockade, just one big ship, a Carrick. And we'll send all of our troops here. And actually, it would be really nice if we could get my... my leader in charge of the siege to help out with the siege speed. Another little tiny army we could pick on. Could her lips be any redder? Doubtful. Hollow in the back of your mind, echo the cautioning words of priests and preachers. Is this what the sermon spoke of? The devil in a woman's body and the temptations of the flesh. Strange. As devils go, this one looks like a lot a lot like an angel. Either way, you'll have to bring this up to you in your in your confession on Sunday. A new legal heir will appear with a weak claim. We lose some papal influence and Catholicism gains 1% reform de desire. Or we could gain a little bit of papal influence, which would probably be better. I don't want a weak heir. I really don't. I think that'd be silly. We do have more troops, but I, I... I don't know. We have no revolt risk, nothing to worry about. We could use them, but I'm really concerned about getting them caught, and I don't want to lose any men. However, if France does come, that's the other problem. If I, if I send too many men over, I only have six uh, transports, so I can only flee six at a time. Although, see, like that, I would really like to be able to support England here. Oh, we can't actually get there. Navarra's independent. We don't have rights to, tr to cross. Can you please give us military access so we can cross through, please? There we go. Yeah, see, we could have made that battle go in our favor. And I'm kind of scared that this army is on its way down to Provence. It's going to be really tough. Ah, uh, yeah, that's dangerous. I don't like that at all. Yeah, we're going to stay in the boats. I am going to be so chickeny in the beginning, because I think that everything you do in the beginning is going to like determine... It's a snowball type effect. It's very, very important that you have a lot of success early on. Okay, who else is bothering us in this trade node? Castile, we've already embargoed. Granada actually has a decent amount of trade power. It'd be nice to attack him before Castile can. We have a truce with Granada, though. Gibraltar, are you independent? No, this is all part of Granada. That's too bad we've got that truce. Darn. So we won't be able to... That's probably why we have that truce, is to prevent us from doing that. Clever, clever. Alright, so we'll just leave the troops at sea. Um, yeah, sorry, bro. I Sorry, England. I, I'm just... I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna risk it. But if they're gonna go north, I'll come here. I'm such a bad ally. So unhelpful. Hey now, I was going to siege that. What do you think you're doing? Now, having the embargo is helping quite a bit. We're actually at positive 4% war score overall. We've got France completely embargoed. We can't embargo these guys because they're inland. But we've got Provence embargoed, which lowers their war enthusiasm. Unfortunately, I cannot force them to peace out on my, on my own. Cannot negotiate separate peace between two junior partners. I'm not the senior partner in this war, but it's possible that England might be able to force them out if we take Provence be able to just force out Provence from the war. So, okay, well, I'm going to take a little break here, but I will see you again in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.